نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته verse 43 and subsequently the king said indeed i have seen in a dream seven fat cows being eaten by seven Uh, that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and the other that were dry o eminent ones explain to me my vision if you should interpret so uh, the king was narrating his dream to find out the interpretation but what happened was they said it is but a mixture of false dreams and we are not learned in the interpretation of dreams so any person who is not learned enough in the knowledge of the interpretation of dreams should not by his assumption or by linking up or hooking up uh, try to explain the interpretation of the dreams this is falsehood but the one who was freed and remembered after a time said i will inform you of its interpretation so sent me forth and uh, now the person who had been set free and was the waiter of wine for the king he remembered about his yusuf alayhi salam verse 46 he said yusuf o man of truth he said what ay you hasidi remember honesty was an essential trait of all the prophets as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining the traits of prophets is repeatedly mentioned kana siddiqan nabiyya prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself was called what as sadiq al amin the truthful and the trustworthy and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says about his own attribute wa man astaqallahu hadisa who is more truthful than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now when the inmate of hell uh, inmate of the prison he returned to yusuf alayhi salam what did he say he called him the truthful and he said explain to us about seven fat cows eaten by seven that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and other that were dry that we may return to the people perhaps they will know about you so here he again comes up to yusuf alayhi salam asking about another dream like after 5 to 8 years forgetting all what had the yusuf alayhi salam had asked him to mention about yusuf alayhi salam to the king had there been anyone else had there been anyone else other than yusuf alayhi salam would have definitely gotten out he would have definitely gotten out calling things like oh you you get lost i was kind to you i asked you to repay me by mentioning me to the king and you great ungrateful you forgetful you just get lost you run away i won't tell you a word no but this was not the case with with the muhsin with the muhsin yusuf alayhi salam in surah al imran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the traits of those who will be the inmates of jannah where allah says they are those who do what al qadimin al ghais they just control their anger afina ana nas they forgive the people wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin and they are the muhsinin they are the doers of good muhsinin are who who are just who are just doers of good they do good to all the bondsmen of allah who do more than their duty who do more than the rights of the next person so what did hazrat yusuf alayhi salam do he was a muhsin he controlled his temper he forgot he forgave him and he was kind to him even then more he deserved you know it would it would have been enough it would have been enough if if he just controlled his his temper and just forgiven him 
and asked him to go back. But he did more than his duty. He gave him the right answer also. So the lives of and the manners of the prophets are what they are actually a, a translation and a human model of the verses of Quran. Yusuf alayhi salam said, Yusuf alayhi salam said, you will plant for seven years consecutively and what you harvest, leave it in its spikes, except a little from what you will eat. And then will come after that seven difficult years, which will consume what you saved for them, except a little from which you will store. And then will come after that a year in which people will be given rain and in which they will press olives and grapes. So what happened here was, that Yusuf alayhi salam in detail explained not only the interpretation of the dream, but also told them the solution to the crisis the dream was pointing to. The interpretation of the dream was what? The dream indicated, and that is what Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam explained to them, that the dream is indicating that there would be, initially there would be seven years of cultivation. And these seven years of cultivation would be followed by seven years of drought, and this would result in severe famine. Now, he told them, he told uh, the people to save themselves from the effects of, as it Yusuf salam explained and advised them how they could save themselves being hit by the famine. Yusuf al-Islam very wisely suggested that in the seven years of cultivation, while they were getting the yields and the crops and the cultivation, they should be consumed with a great planning and calculation. And all the excess should be kept in for the tough years of famine ahead. He also suggested that the grains should not be taken out of the stocks because that is what? A natural protection against all forms of insects attacking the grains. And then he suggested that they should be kept in the stocks and then they should be stored in the granaries for future consumption. What do we learn from all this? The goodness, the kindness of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. And has the Yusuf salam's goodness and kindness to whom? Idol worshippers? A society who had been so unfair and hard to him? He had spent eight years of his youth in the prison because of their wrong decision and their injustice. Even when they inquired about an issue for which he knew a wise solution, he openly, he openly came out with the solution and shared his knowledge. He was just asked about the interpretation of the dream and that was it. But since he knew even more because of his wisdom blessed, blessed to him by Allah, he open-heartedly shared it and guided them for what was better. Why did he do this? To save the humanity from the calamity of famine. This is a care and service of humanity by all the blessings he was blessed with. This is providing services even for non-Muslims, for the general welfare out of sheer goodness to tell more than he was asked. Verse number 50, and the king said, bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, Yusuf alayhi salam said, Return to your master and ask him, what is the case of the women who cut their hands? Indeed, my Lord is knowing of their plan. Now what next? When the person went back to the court and narrated to the king all what Yusuf salam had told about the, about the interpretation and about the solution to the famine, the king was thoroughly impressed. He was, he was impressed by the wisdom. And so he called out, for uh, Hazrat Yusuf al-Islam to be brought to him from the prison. Had it been anyone else being imprisoned for the last eight years in the prison and now being called by the king would have, would have run out without the second thought. 
what could be better? What could be better? This was like the best offer under the situation. What else could one be? What else chance could one get? Like being invited by the king himself out of the prison. But for the prophets, remember, the worldly gains, the worldly riches, power, authority was just like of no importance and no priority at all. His first priority here was to purify his character from the immoral blame, from the blame of immorality. Because, you know, if the prophets and even all those who are engaged in dawah or invitation towards Allah, if they have dishonesty or immorality of character proven against them, then their dawa and their invitation towards Allah, it will lose its effectiveness. So to rectify his blame, he asked that an inquiry should be carried out from all the women who had put the blame on him. So what did the king do? Said the king to the women, what was your condition when you sought to seduce Yusuf salam? They said, all single, they all said, Perfect is Allah. We know about him, no evil. The wife of Aziz said, now the truth has become evident. I, it was I who sought to seduce him. And indeed he is of the truthful. That is so Aziz will know that I did not betray him in his absence and that Allah does not guide the plan of betrayers. So the wife of Aziz came out with the truth and the, the blame, which was uh, uh, the blame of immorality and as an adulterer, which was put on Hazrat Yusuf salam, was now cleared off. And moreover, it was also proved that he was sincere to his master and he was honest and he was trustworthy. And I do not acquit myself. Indeed, the soul is persistent enjoiner of evil, except those upon which my Lord has mercy. Indeed, my Lord is forgiving and merciful. So here he is continuously uh, relating and introducing the people to the attributes of Allah, just like his father. Verse number 54, and the king said, bring him to me. I will appoint him exclusively for myself. And when he, uh, when he spoke to himself, he said, indeed, you are today established in position and trusted. So the king initially sensed relating all what Yusuf salam had told and the way he had behaved and what witnesses had come, the king sensed the intelligence, the wisdom and intellect of Yusuf salam. And after the dialogue, he, he realized about his honesty and his sincerity to his master and his modesty was also proven. So the king thought high of Yusuf salam, and uh, he considered appointing him in one of his personal posts to avail of Yusuf salam's services. Verse 55, Yusuf salam said, appoint me over the storehouses of the land. Indeed, I will be a knowing guardian. So now what happened that when the king mentioned how reliable he think he thought that Hazrat Yusuf salam was. That is, the king mentioned his reliability of Hazrat Yusuf salam and was posting him. Then Hazrat Yusuf salam took advantage of the situation and he openly asked for power and post and authority for himself. By this. Yusuf salam's purpose was not to acquire the worldly gains or riches, but his purpose was purely and purely to gain power and authority for the implementation of Islam, to gain power and authority for the implementation of law and rule of the Lord and the land of the Lord. So what do we learn is that it is not only permissible it is not only permissible, but it's also advisable to ask for or to work for or to make struggle for 
acquiring power and authority, provided it is done with intention of implementation of Islam. And in fact, all this, trying to work for or trying to make effort to acquire power and authority and rule, in fact, is a sunnah of Hazrat Yusuf salam. And in fact, it is also a sunnah of Prophet wasalam, himself. When he immigrated to Medina, he also, after becoming the head of state of Medina, he accepted the he accepted the post and the position of the head of state of Medina. And he did so. Why? Because he wanted to make Medina as an Islamic state where the, where the system of government was according to the orders of Allah, when, when the system of judiciary was according to the laws of Allah, and where the system of life and when the system of society was according to the teachings and ethics of Quran and Hadith. Moreover, from these two verses, the verse number 54 and verse number 55, we also learn the traits which are needed for the righteous and pious Muslim rulers and Muslim leaders we are going to choose for ourselves. The good Muslim leaders and the perfect Muslim rulers need to have what? They need to be makinun, aminun, hafizun, alimun. They need to be trustworthy. They need to be knowledgeable and wise, and they need to be protective and guarding of the teachings of Quran and Hadith and of the secrets and of the mineral resources and of the wealth and riches of the Islamic State. And thus, we established Yusuf salam in the land to settle therein wherever he willed. We touch with our mercy whom we will, and we do not allow to be lost the reward of those who do good. And the reward of hereafter is better for those who believed and were fearing of Allah. Verse number 58, and the brothers of Yusuf salam came seeking food, and they entered upon him. The brothers of Yusuf salam coming to Egypt. Now from here, the next important part of the story starts. And the part of the story explains what happened between Yusuf salam and his brothers. Now, why did the brothers of Yusuf salam come? And where had they come? The brothers had come from Palestine to Egypt. Because you know what happened as had been prophesied and as had been informed as the interpretation of the dream by Hazrat Yusuf salam, severe drought, severe drought. And it ended up in a very extensive and widespread famine. Almost all the countries and all the land was struck by this calamity. But the people of Egypt was saved from the famine, from the disastrous results of the calamity of the famine. Why and how? This was the wise planning and the organized, timely management of Yusuf salam as a Muslim ruler. Beforehand, he had planned all this. And this is what had saved the people of Egypt from the famine despite the extensive drought. Like all the other places, they were struck by famine, but the people of Egypt were saved. This proves what? The productive Muslim rulers and the implementation of Islam can be for countries, for societies. How helpful, how, how productive, how productive, how fruitful, how useful Muslim rulers and how useful and how productive the implementation of Islam can be for societies and for countries. Allah's help realize the importance of implementation of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, help us all realize the importance of the implementation of Islam and help us strive and struggle and work for the empowerment of Islam. So the brothers had traveled all the way from Palestine to Egypt to get food rations from Egypt. 
In Egypt, there were grains sufficient for the use of their own people as well. They were surplus for the people coming from all the other areas who, who were struck with famine. This is the blessing of implementation of Islam as a code of life in a society and as a mode of government in a state. And then what happens is that they entered upon him and he, who has a Yusuf salam, recognized them, who the brothers, but he was taken, was to them unknown. Now, why did the brothers not recognize his Yusuf salam? Firstly, because when they had dumped them in the bottom of the well, he was, uh, he was like just 17 years old. And now like 30 years being passed, there were cross changes in his appearance. Obviously he must have, uh, he, this, all these changes, these changes in his bodily appearance must have made it impossible for him to be recognized. And secondly, they had dumped him in the well and they could not, they could not in their wildest of dreams imagine that he will end up being the king of Egypt. But he had recognized all of them because they were like 10 of them, a clan of 10. And like they were older than him and he, they had not, not like most probably changed a lot. So he recognized them and they did not recognize him. And what happened when he recognized them and when he had furnished them with their supplies, he said, bring me a brother of yours from your father and do not you see, do not you see that I give full measures and that I am the best of accommodators. But if you do not bring him to me, no measures will there be hereafter for you from me, nor will you approach me. They said, we will attempt to dissuade his father from keeping him. Indeed, we will do it. And then in uh, the next verse also, he continued trying to tempt them. So when after from the verse number 59 and the following verses, what we need, uh, what we learn is that when after receiving the ration, the, the sons, uh, the, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, he gave them the rations. And uh, after giving them the ra rations, when they were about to leave, there was a dialogue which took place between Yusuf alayhi salam and the brothers. Obviously, they're not recognizing him and he recognizing them. He told them to bring with them. The next time when they came to get the rations, he asked them to bring uh, their youngest brother with them when they came the next time. Hazrat Yaqub salam had 12 sons, 10 uh, sons from one wife and the two younger sons, Hazrat Yusuf salam and his real brother, Hazrat Bini Amin from the other wife. So Yusuf salam was referring to Hazrat Bini Amin. He tried out like all tactics to ensure that they would bring him in his next visit. He mentioned how he was a very good accommodator and how he had accommodated to him to them and how he had given them extra weights out of kindness and goodness. He just was trying to tempt them. And not only that, he also tried to give them a threat that if he did not bring them, if they did not bring his brother, then they will not get any more rations. So he tried to tempt them to convince them and he tried to threat them to convince them. He was just trying to ensure that Bini Amin comes with them the next time. Verse number 62, and Yusuf salam said to his servants, put their merchandise into their saddle bags so they might recognize it when they have gone back to their people and perhaps they will again return. So returning their uh, merchandise was to create an impact of his generosity and of his kindness to ensure that they do come back next time and they do bring their younger brother also. Verse number 63, 
So when they returned to their father, they said, oh, father, further Myers have been denied to us. So send with us our brother that we will be given Myers. And indeed, we will be his guardian. So when they got back home, they tried to convince and motivate their father to send Benjamin with them in the next visit and uh, making, uh, making pledges and promises of keeping him protected and taking care of him also. Verse number 64, he who, Hazrat Yaqub salam, he said, should I entrust you with him except as I entrusted you with his brother before? But Allah is the best guardian and he is the most merciful of the merciful. So Hazrat Yaqub salam seemed to, he like seemed to have his doubts because of his previous bitter experiences with, experience with them, the bitter experience of letting them take Yusuf and um, taking them for their words. So they also seemed to have lost their reliability in, their fa in the eyes of their fathers also. Because, you know, this is exactly what happens to people who are liars. Because uh, when they had lied once, they had lost their reliability to Hazrat Yaqub salam. But uh, this time, to actually, when they were wanting to guard Bini Amin, they had to make oath and they had to make promises to make him believe. But uh, while Yaqub salam mentioned his reservations on their demand, they gained, uh, they gained uh, acceptance to his uh, routine manners. According to his routine manners, he was giving introduction to the traits of Allah. And uh, while his uh, conversation, and he told him, uh, he told them that he being the father was trying to be protective for his son. But the actual power of protection is with Allah, who is merciful. So he continues with his manner of introducing the attributes of Allah in his routine conversation. Verse 65, and when they opened their baggage, they found their merchandise, which merchandise, which had been returned to them. They said, oh, father, what more could we desire? This is our merchandise returned to us, and we will obtain supplies for our family and protect our brother and obtain an increase of a camel's load. That is, when another brother will be there, we will, the ration was given per head for individuals. So, if another person goes, we will obtain an increase of camel's load. That is an easy measurement. So this was exactly why Yusuf salam had asked his servants to return his their merchandise so that they will be impressed by the generosity and they would convinced to visit again and bring the brother to him. Verse 66, Yaqub salam said, Never will I send him with you until you give me a promise by Allah that you will bring him back to me unless you should be surrounded by enemies. And when they had given their promises, he said, Allah, over what we say is a witness. Finally, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, he agreed to send the youngest son under the condition that they will promise to protect him. And at the same time, he was continuously introducing Allah and the attributes of Allah. Verse number 69. And then he, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, he said, Oh, my sons, do not enter from one gate, but enter from different gates. And I cannot avail you against the decree of Allah at all. The decision is only for Allah. Upon him have I relied and upon him let those who rely indeed rely. Now, why did Hazrat Yaqub salam suggest this, that my sons do not enter from one gate, by, but enter from different gates? This suggestion was given by Hazrat Yaqub salam to the 10 sons for basically two reasons, which I understand, because he thought that the 11 sons, obviously the 10 previous and now Bin Yamin being added with them, the 11 sons, all tall and well built and good looking and strong and youthful, all of them entering through one single gate abreast, they will catch the eyes of people 
And this may lead to them being affected by some envious, some jealous, or some evil eye. Moreover, since there was famine and there was poverty, so in such um, socioeconomic calamity, um, 11 young men, they entering from the same gates, uh, they might be suspected as those who will loot and plunder, or they might be taken as dacoits, and they might be taken as prisoners. So he did not voice out his fears, but, but very, very wisely gave the suggestion to his sons. And this was just a fatherly suggestion, trying to protect them from any harm or any crisis or any loss. But at the same time, while he was suggesting, uh, giving a fatherly advice, trying to save him, at the same time, he again talked about Allah. So what is it? Frequently talking about Allah, frequently remembering Allah, frequently mentioning Allah, and indirectly introducing the traits of Allah. These are all, these are all the successful parenting trips by Yaqub alayhi salam. And what he told them was that what happens is not what the ones can plan or desire, but is totally what the Lord plans and desires. And that we, we can only plan and we can only try and make an effort. And that we should, we should try and we should try and make a plan and effort to save ourselves from loss and difficulties. But despite our efforts to protect and save us, in, it is what? It is the order of Allah which protects us. So despite making efforts and despite struggling to save ourselves, we need to rely on Allah, who is the real controller of all. Verse number 68, and when they entered from where their father had ordered them. So this is exactly what happening is now that they are now turning a bit obedient to their father, uh, acting upon the orders of their father. Say, so entered from where their father had ordered them. It did not avail them against Allah at all, except it was a need within the soul of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, which he satisfied. And indeed, he was a possessor of knowledge because of what we had taught him, but most of the people do not know. So this is exactly how it happened, despite the fact that Hazrat Yaqub had thought of it well in time, had planned, had suggested how to stay safe, despite the fact that he was wise, despite the fact that he was a prophet, still the brothers of Yusuf finally did end up being suspected and taken up as thieves and they were taken up as prisoners. So what happens is what Allah wills, but we, even despite we rely on Allah, we need to work, we need to plan, we need to try, we need to make effort to save ourselves from hardships and difficulties. But after making all the efforts and plans and struggles, we need to rely and stay content with the orders of Allah. Verse number 69, and when they entered upon Yusuf salam, he took his brother to himself and he said, indeed, I am your brother, so do not despair over what they used to do to me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When they got to you, uh, they were together. Finally, finally, when the brothers of Yusuf salam got the younger brother to Yusuf salam, and the two real brothers, they were united and they met after a long period. What happened? What happened? What did they talk? What did they say? How did they behave? What was their manner? I will stop here. I will stop here to comment. You know, while reading the stories of the prophets and the stories of the patient companions of the prophets also, one starts imagining that they were superhumans. And we start thinking that they were like, most probably they were robots who were lacking emotions and who were lacking emotions which human beings had. But remember, this was not so. They were humans. 
They were humans with all the normal feelings and emotions. They got upset and anxious. They were sad. They were angry. They missed their loved ones. They enjoyed being with them. They had likes and dislikes. Yusuf Salam had missed his family, had missed his family. That is why he was longing to see his younger brother. And how eagerly took his brother. And then he secretly introduced himself to his real brother. And then he said, Ana Ahuka, I am your brother. And then what did he have to say? It is very important. It is a very important message for all of us. After like more than 30 years, a period of solitude, of hardships, of crises, of trials consecutively one after the other. And all this period of misery, because of whom? Because of the brothers throwing them in the well. All these prolonged years of misery, of being deprived, deprived of so much, all coming up to him because of what? Because of his brothers. Anyone in his position after such a reunion would have just burst out, would have just burst out with all sorts of complaints, all sorts of complaints against the brothers, all sorts of bad words, words and cursing the, the brothers. Who had, who had planned, who had attempted to murder him, cribbing, complaining, backbiting. But here we see nothing of the sort. On the contrary, we, we see that he is consoling. He is consoling as a bini Amin, saying, Fala tapta is, don't get disappointed, don't get upset. This is how a true Muslim needs to behave. This is the self-control. And moreover, this is how he needs to relate to his past. No hue, no cry, no regrets, no stresses about the past, moving on in life, forgetting about the harsh memories of the past. This is the positive mindedness of the believers we need to instill in ourselves. Verse number 70. So when he had furnished them with their supplies. He put a gold measuring bowl into the bag of his brother. Then an announcer called out, O oh, people of caravan, indeed, you are the thieves. <coughs> so now let's see what happened is that when the, the furnishing was done and when the caravan and the brothers were about to leave, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, he ordered his servants to place his golden bowl in the luggage of his younger brother, Hazrat Bini Amin. And maybe this was just like a gift. It was like a gift, a departing since the brother was leaving. So it was like a gift from Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam to his younger brother. But at the same time, there was an announcer. He announced that they had lost another ball. What happened next? Verse 71. They said while approaching them, what is, what is it you are missing? That is the brothers asked the announcer that what had they lost? Verse number 72. They said, we are missing the mayor of the king. What was, my, uh, what was missing was Sava'ul Malik the mayor of the king and for he who produces it is the reward of a camel's load and i am responsible for it so now what was lost by the people or by the servants of the king was they announced was the sava ul malik the mayoring bowl of the king uh, it must have been a bowl which was used to measure the grains to be given because that was obvious <coughs> It was obvious that uh, some prescribed amount of rations was given per head. So this uh, bowl, which was used to measure the prescribed amount of ration per head, that was lost. And the announcer also at the same time announced that the person who would find this suwa, 
of the king, he would be given an extra allowance. This was to make a temptation for them to find out the suah. And uh, there was an extra allowance of a person as a reward. So what happened next? Verse number 73, they said, by Allah, you have certainly loaned that we did not come to cause corruption in the land and we have not been thieves. So this is Hazrat Yaqub had tried to save them from this allegation and this, uh, this punishment of, and this penalty, but this was supposed to happen, so it happened. They had tried to clarify that they were not thieves and they had not stolen the mayor of uh, the king, but they were taken as it. Now, what happened next, verse 74, the accuser said, then what would be its recompense if you should be liars? The brother said, its recompense is that he in whose bag it is found, he himself will be in its recompense. Thus, do we recompense the wrongdoers? So this was uh, mutually decided what punishment would be given to the thief in whose bag or whose luggage the sava would be found. Verse number 76, so he began the search with their bags before the bags of his brother, then he extracted it from the bag extracted it was it was what it was that golden bag which was extracted from the bag of Hazrat Bini Amin which Hazrat Yusuf salam, had gifted him but the sava was not extracted he extracted it from the bag of his brother since that also belonged to the king and something else was also found Thus did we plan for Yusuf, and he could not have taken his brother within the religion of the king, except that Allah will we raise in degrees whom we will, but over every possessor of knowledge is one more knowing who the Allah al alim now, what happened was that when the search started, so when Bini Amin's luggage was searched, instead of the suwa, the golden bowl, which Hazrat Yusuf salam, had gifted him, it came out. And since that was also a king's position, so Hazrat Bini Amin was taken as a thief. Now, how did this all go about? According to some traditions and commentaries, uh, in some commentaries, they say, that it was actually Yusuf alayhi salam who had planned it all up himself. At first, he ordered the golden bowl to be kept, and then he ordered the announcer to announce and the people to search, to create a justification to um, keep Bini Amin back in Egypt. But, you know, to me somehow, this clever trick does not seem correct. It does not seem appropriate. I cannot imagine that a prophet would have played such a trick or created or fabricated the whole situation. It somehow did not seem up to the level of a prophet doing all, playing up all these tricks. It was actually what? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, Qazalika kidn ali Yusuf. This is how we planned for Yusuf alayhi salam. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning was to reunite both the brothers by his grace. Yusuf alayhi salam only had gifted the golden bowl and put it in the luggage. But by the planning of Allah, coincidentally, by the planning of Allah, coincidentally, another bowl got misplaced concurrently at the same time and when it was searched then they got out the golden uh, the golden bowl and thus the brother was labeled as the thief and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had thus created the condition for Yusuf alayhi salam to keep his brother back and Allah had created the condition of reunion of the brothers so what happened is that what happens is is not what Yusuf salam planned is happened was what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned. And uh, they, what uh, Yaqub salam had planned, even that did not happen. What happened was what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had planned. 
and he had just tried to save his children. But remember, no father, not even prophets, no one can save except the only Savior who is our Rabb, our merciful sustainer. Verse number 77, they said, who the brothers, if he steals, who has it been mean? he steals a brother of his, who has it Yusuf alayhi salam has stolen before also, but Yusuf alayhi salam kept it within himself and did not reveal it to them. He said, you are worse in position and Allah is most knowing of what you describe. Now, what happened was that when the brothers of uh, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, they found out that Bini Amin had stolen, they came up with a story of the past and they said that Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam had stolen. So that is why his younger brother is also stealing, keeping up to the same routine and the same example. Now, what had Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam stolen to which the brothers was referring to? This is, this was that when Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam was a child, he visited his grandmother's house. And the neighbor to, her, to his grandmother was a worshiper of idols. And he being born and he being bred in a family of prophets, he obviously took dislike to the idols. So he very secretly, he stole the neighbor woman's idols and he broke them. So referring to this, the brothers said that Yusuf alayhi salam was a thief. And that is why taking on to his example, Bini Amin had also stolen. Now, what is this? Telling Yusuf alayhi salam very much on his face where they were receiving so much of his kindness, receiving so much of his kindness and of his goodness, but still face to face telling him that he was a thief and he had stolen. What did Hazrat Yusuf salam do? All what he needed was to tell his soldiers to cut their heads off and to behead all of them. But what did he do? He did what? Qazimin al Afina Ananas, Wallahu Yuhibbul Muhsineen. He he showed up and he came up with the with the mannerism of whom? Yusuf alayhi salam, the Muhsin, the doers of good and kindness. They said, O oh, Aziz, indeed, he has a father who is an old man. So take one of us in place of him. Indeed, we see you are a doer of good. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah to prevent that we take except him with whom we found our positions. Indeed, we would then be unjust. They were trying to convince him to keep any one of them, of other than brothers other than Bini Amin, so that they could fulfill the promise and to guard and protect and return Hazrat Bini Amin to Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. So you see, there is a mild change. They are getting mindful and sensitive about their pledges and about their oaths. And they are also sensitive about uh, not hurting their father also. And they are like slightly obedient and respectful to the father also. So this is a slow change, which is coming by what? By the successful parenting, the parenting of tolerance and of, uh, of, uh, of forbearance by Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. Verse number 80, so when they had despaired of him, that is when they tried to convince Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam to take any one of them instead of Bini Amin. But he said that this was not fair. According to the law, only the thief would be kept back. So when they had despaired of them, they secluded themselves in private consultation. That is, they started asking one another what to do. The eldest of them said, do you not know that your father has taken upon you an oath by Allah and that before you failed in your duty to Yusuf Islam, so you can sense slowly and steadily there is a change which is coming in the temperaments, in the personalities and in the manners of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub Islam. So I will never leave this land until my father permits me or Allah decides for me. And he is the best of judges. Subhanallah. So there you are. The style and the manner of Hazrat Yusuf Islam, where he was slowly and steadily introducing them to the attributes of Allah has come up 
in the speech of those disobedient children also. Now they are also talking and mentioning and remembering about the attributes of Allah. This change in manner of the sons of Yaqub alayhi salam has started. They have started obeying their father. They have, uh, they obeyed the father and entered to the various gates. Now they are concerned about keeping up their promises and they are talking in a manner similar to the manner of their father. So remember, spoil the child and spare the rod. No, the proverb is not proven here. They said, return to your father and say, O oh father, indeed your son has stolen and we did not testify except to what we know, what we knew and we were not the witnesses of unseen and ask the city in which we were and the caravan in which we came. Indeed, we are the truthful. They, although now they were truthful, but a person who who has been a liar in past, he loses his reliability. And then even if he is, he is talking the truth, he has to gather witnesses for making people believe him. Verse number 83, Yaqub alayhi salam said, rather your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting. Perhaps Allah will bring them to me all together. Indeed, he is who is knowing and who is wise. Subhanallah. What patience. Now, again, another trial for Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. He lost Hazrat Yusuf salam, and now losing his youngest son again, what does he say? Sabrun Jamilun. And he also said something else. He said, Inna Allaha, Allahu inna yaktini bihi jamia. Perhaps Allah will bring them back together. This shows what? his reliance on Allah, his beliefs in the powers of Allah, and he has not lost hope. Remember, a person when loses hope, then it becomes difficult for him to stay patient. He was patient, why? Because he realized he relied on Allah. He was why he was patient because he had belief on the powers, on the control, or on the authority and the controls of Allah, and he had not lost hope. And moreover, he knew that Allah is what? al alim and al hakim And he turned away from them and said, Oh, my sorrow over Yusuf, and his eyes become wide from grief. And for he was of that a suppressor. Verse number 85, they said, by Allah, you will not cease remembering Yusuf salam, until you become fatally ill or become of those who perish. So you realize here still that mild flames of envy are still just kindling off and on. Verse number 86, he said, I only complain of my suffering and my grief to Allah. And I know from Allah that which you do not know. Beautiful words of Hazrat Yaqub saying what? Innama ashku bathi wa huduni illallah. A wonderful line of affection for all of us. What is this? In time of suffering, in time of grief, complain and request to none but Allah, the true and the only master who can help. You know what happens is? In a time of grief and sorrow and in time of crisis, people go about raising hue and cry in front of others. People go about complaining and grumbling about their hardships and difficulties to others. People go about asking for help from others. But all of this is too of no avail. What we need to do in any suffering, in any crisis, in any calamity, in any grief, Return to Allah, supplicate to Allah, seek forgiveness from Allah, seek help, support, guidance, and protection from Allah. Verse number 87, oh, my sons, go, go and find about Yusuf and his brother and despair not of relief from Allah. Indeed, no one despairs of relief from Allah except the disbelieving person still has a ray of hope.
They said, Oh, Aziz, adversity has touched us and our family, and we have come with goods poor in quality, but give us full measures and be charitable to us. Indeed, Allah rewards the charitable. Subhanallah. Look. Look who is, who is advising whom to do charity? The brothers of Yusuf, the oppressors, the evil, wicked planners, they advising Hazrat Yusuf salam, to be charitable and telling him that Allah will reward the charitable. This was the last blue. This was the last straw. And Yusuf salam, finally broke. He had to now disclose his entity. But on the third encounter, does he speak to them as Yusuf salam? This was his third encounter with his brothers. He has, he has been exhibiting total self-control and controlling his anger and forgiving them throughout. Now on the third encounter, does he speak to them as Yusuf salam? After controlling his emotions previous occasions, once he opens up, what does he have to say? What does he have to say now that once he is opening up? He said, do you know what you did with Yusuf and his brother when you were ignorant? And they said, are you Yusuf? He said, yes, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. Allah, Allah has certainly favored us. Indeed, he fears. He who fears Allah and is patient, then indeed Allah does not allow to be lost the reward of those who, who, who do good. Remember, had there been anyone else instead of Hazrat Yusuf salam, would have been overpowered, would have exploded like a volcano, would have been outraged flown in anger, would have come out like, oh, you brutals, you murderers, you envious people, you hard-hearted murderers, you threw me, you threw me in the well, you spoiled whole of my life, and so on and so forth. But the pious, the God-fearing, the muhsin, he comes out saying, Questioning them, making them think, making them think, you know what, what you did? Rather than saying things himself, just making them think of the events themselves and regret and feel ashamed themselves. Rather than calling names, rather than being ill-mannered, he, he behaves as if, seems to justify their bad manners relating it to ignorant. He seems to justify their bad manners and relates it to ignorance. Why? So that they would realize how harmful, how harmful their ignorance has been to them. So they may try to remove and get rid of their ignorance. What a remarkable control of emotions. What a perfect check and control of language. What appropriately chosen balanced words, how forgiving, how kind, and yet sincere. Subhanallah, subhanallah, this is a Muslim, and this is a Mohsin, and this is a role model for all of us. In the verse 20, Allah also mentions the importance of fear of Allah, piety and patience. He is humble to say, Hazrat Yusuf was humble to say that all what he had achieved was not because of his own, or because of his own wisdom, his own efforts, his own working. He had achieved was what? Because of a favor and blessing of Allah. And then like father, like son, like Hazrat Yaqub, Hazrat Yusuf very much like his father, in his normal routine, introducing to the attributes of Allah. 
So this is, this is what the manner of a Mohsin is like. Verse number 91, they said, by Allah, certainly Allah has preferred you over us. And indeed, we have been sinners. Now the brothers are changing, changing. The transformation has accelerated. And this transformation was brought about by what? By the successful, successful, tolerant parenting by Hazrat Yus Yaqub alayhi salam. And now finally, now finally, the final role was played by the goodness and kindness of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. They've started confessing. They accept, they regret, and now they are apologetic. And they also realize the attributes of Allah. Allah says that if you work to take away bad manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered, idfa billati hiya ahsan. You removed all the bad things with what? With goodness. And Allah promises that if you work to take away bad manners, if you work to take away bad manners of your enemies and of those who are against you, with your goodness, you will see that very soon your bitter enemies will become your sincere friends. And that is exactly what happened in the case of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, and in the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, they were what? They were they were patient, they were kind, they were forgiving, they were goodness in their, they had goodness in their manners. And then their, their heartiest enemies, they turned to be their sincere friends. He said, no blame will there be upon you today. Allah will forgive you. And he is the most merciful of the merciful. The words of Hazrat Yusuf salam, la tathriba alaykum ul yawm. The golden words of Muhsin Yusuf salam. These were the words, words which were announced by Prophet salam, on the day of the conquest of Makkah. The benefactor of humanity announcing total forgiveness for all the people of Makkah. Yusuf salam, forgave all the brothers and also prayed prayed for their forgiveness. And then he continues, he continues in the matter, in the manner which was trained to him by Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, that he is introducing to the attributes of Allah. And here, when he is forgiving them himself, what does he introduce to? He does not mention the attribute of Al-Alim and Al-Hakim here. Very wisely here, when they are when they are feeling regretful and when they are confessing, then very wisely does Yusuf salam introduce the different attributes of Allah here. According to the conversation, he introduces that Allah is merciful and forgiving. So that realizing this attribute of Allah, the brothers, they start seeking and they return towards the merciful and forgiving Allah, seeking forgiveness. Verse number 93, take this, my shirt, and cast it over the face of my father. He will become seeing and bring me your family all together. Now, after announcing forgiveness for all, forgiving all and announcing forgiveness for all, what did Hazrat Yusuf salam do? He did not prolong in indulging about the discussion of the past. What happened has passed. Why spend time and waste time talking about the past, about something which cannot be undone, which cannot be changed? So let's, let's just move along in life rather than clinging on to the past. This is the positive outlook needed for and by a believer. No point, no point wasting time and effort discussing and continuing discussions about the past. So go, go, take my shirt and put it on the eyes or the face of my father. His sight will return. Because we know that because of continuously crying of sorrow for the separation of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, his beloved, his beloved son, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam had lost his sight. Verse 94, and when the caravan departed from Egypt, their father said, indeed, I find the smell of Yusuf. 
I find the smell of Yusuf. Father is no doubt a father. He finds the smell of Yusuf. And then he added, you would say, and I would say that he was alive if you did not think me weakened in mind. And they said, by Allah, indeed you are in your same old error. Father gets the smell of Hazrat Yusuf salam, despite the fact that crying in sorrow, he had lost his sight, but he had not lost his hope. This is reliance. And this is knowing and believing in the powers and authorities of Allah. Allah bless us all. And when the bearer of good tidings arrived, he cast over his face and he returned once again seeing. He said, did I not tell you that I know from Allah that which you do not know? Verse number 97, they said, Oh, Father, ask for our forgiveness of our sins. Indeed, we have been sinners. So the brothers finally have transformed. They are apologetic to their father. They are apologetic to their brother. They are confessing their sins. They are seeking forgiveness from Allah. And they are requesting their father and brother to ask for their forgiveness. You see, it was not like spare the rod and spoil the child. The cool, the patient, the tolerant, the forgiving behavior and handling of Hazrat Yaqub al-Islam with the sons finally succeeded, but slowly and steadily. It did take a lifetime, but it did work. Allah help us, Allah support us, Allah guide us, Allah protect us. He said, I will ask for forgiveness for you from my Lord. Indeed, he, it is he who is forgiving and merciful. Now, both the son and the father, Yusuf al-Islam and Yaqub al-Islam, are introducing to the, 11, to the 10 brothers the attribute of Allah, since they want them to return and seek forgiveness from Allah. Verse number 99. And when they entered upon Yusuf salam, who the whole family is now migrating from Palestine to Egypt. What did Hazrat Yusuf salam have to do? He took his parents to himself and said, enter Egypt, Allah willing, inshallah, we will be safe and secure. And he raised his parents upon the throne and they bowed to him in frustration. And he said, oh, my father, this is the explanation of my vision of before. My Lord has made it a reality. And he was certainly good to me when he took me out of prison and brought you here from the Bedouin life after Shaitan had induced estrangement between me and my brothers. Indeed, my Lord, is subtle in what he wills. Indeed, it is he, it is he who is the knowing and wise. So now Yusuf salam, the king of Egypt, he receives his family, he receives his parents. What message is this? The message of importance of maintaining the relations of bonds, the relations of kin, how important they were. He did not breach them. He did not break them. He joined all of them together in Egypt. And then when he received his parents, he made them sit on his throne beside him. And all the people bowed down with respect. Now this ending was what? This ending was what had been shown in his dream. And we, we had mentioned and we went through it in the first stanza and Hazrat Yaqub salam had given him the interpretation was correct. Now, stopping here to analyze the behavior of Hazrat Yusuf salam as a son. Hazrat Yusuf salam had shifted to a foreign land and there he had acquired power and authority and position and rule. He was the king of Egypt. But he did not leave his parents alone. He did not leave his parents alone behind, struggling with their old age all by himself, all by themselves. But instead, he brought them, he brought his parents and he brought his family. He brought them with him. He shared his success with them and he gave them all the love, all the care, respect and regard 
that Allah had blessed him with. Today, if we see and if we compare sons, children, shifting, shifting out of the country to places, raising high in life, and then they tend to forget. And then they tend to forget and leave and abandon their parents. Or son, sons rising high in life, they tend to get arrogant and start looking down on their old parents, calling them ignorant, calling them obsolete, calling them outdated. Remember what we are. Remember what we are, where we've reached, what we have achieved is no doubt by the grace of Allah, by the, but actually the struggle, the efforts, the work of our parents also. Our achievements and our performances will be reflected where our children will reach. And then Hazrat Yusuf said what? That my, my Lord was very kind to me. Yusuf is talking to his family about his achievements, about what all he has received, what he has acquired. But he is not arrogant. He is not boastful. He is not showing off about his wisdom, about his tactful planning. Or he is not flaunting about how, how clueful, how sharp, how wise he had been to achieve all that. Instead, he is humble. He is humble and he's acknowledging and mentioning that this is all what? This is all the blessings of Allah, the mercies of Allah. This is gratitude. This is gratitude and remembrance and patience and humbleness, which has been shown by Yusuf as a Mohsin. He continues with his introduction of Allah that he is what? al alim and Al-Hakim. Because belief in these two attributes was the main asset of his life. My Lord, you have given me something of sovereignty and taught me of the interpretation of dreams, creator of heavens and earth. The words of the supplication are beautiful. Creator of the heavens and earth, you are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die as a Muslim and join me with the righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how Hazrat Yusuf salam is acknowledging the blessings of Allah and yet supplicating for more here and hereafter. Beautiful supplication taught to us in Quran by Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. That is from the news of the unseen, which we reveal, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to you. And you were not with them when they put together their plan while they conspired. Who? The brothers of Yusuf who conspired against Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. And most of the people, although you strive for it, are not believers. So now there is coming for the believers, non-believers of Quraysh, a warning. And you do not ask of them for it any payment. It is not except a reminder to the world. And how many a sign within the heavens and the earth do they pass over while they therefrom are turning away? And most of them believe not in Allah except while they associated others with him. And, they, and then do they feel secure that there will not come to them an overwhelming aspect of the punishment of Allah or that the hour will not come upon them suddenly while they do not perceive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually warning the people of Quraysh who had come up with the question. The question was answered and now they are being warned that look, the brothers of Yusuf salam, was so nasty and so evil and how they were punished. 
So if you carry on with your nasty plans and your evil tricks against Prophet wasallam, you will be punished similarly. And Prophet wasallam will be helped similarly the way Hazrat Yusuf wasallam was helped by Allah. Say, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight. I and those who follow me and exalted is Allah. And I am not of those who associate others with him. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And we sent not before you as messengers except men to whom we reveal from among the people of cities. So have they not traveled through the earth and observed how was the end of those before them? and the home of hereafter is best for those who fear Allah, then will you not reason? Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-khuda, wal-tuqa, wal-athafa, wal-ghina. And they continued until when the messengers despaired and were certain that they had been denied, there came to them our victory and whoever we willed was saved. And our punishment cannot be repelled from the people who are criminals. So continuously, the people of Quraysh are being warned. And Prophet ﷺ and his companions who were being persecuted and oppressed, they are being consoled and promised the help and victory of Allah. Verse number 111, there was certainly in their stories a lesson for those of understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those of understanding. Never was the Quran a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it and a detailed explanation of all the things and guidance and mercy for people who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, help us learn and the remember from the stories of Quran. Help us, help us take a lesson from the source of reformation for us to be obedient for our manners and for our ethics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us connect with the book, help us connect with receiving the teachings of the Quran. Make it, make it a guidance, make it a guidance for all of us, for our fathers and for, for our descendants. Make it a source of your mercy on all of us, our deceased and our progenies. Help us be kind, help us be forgiving, help us stay tolerant and patient. Help us develop reliance and humbleness. Help us take out any forms of arrogance from ourselves, help us control our temple, help us check and control our language and our manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our follies, forgive our forgetfulnesses and forgive all our sins. May they be major, may they be minor, may they be known, may they be unknown, may they be hidden or may they be shown. Forgive us all, forgive our young, forgive our old, forgive all those live, forgive all those who have deceived. Forgive our major sins, forgive our minor sins, forgive our concealed sins, forgive our revealed sins, and bless us all here and hereafter. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Rabbana srif anna azaba jahannum. Inna azabaha kana gharama. Inna hasaat mustakarun wa maqama. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Allahumma inni as'aluk al-jannatul firdaus. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sabiyul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana bada iz hadaytana wa hablana milatunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati yamma 
yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin